ESCOM is buckling under pressure. Aging infrastructure, electricity that the utility believes is too cheap, coal supply issues and sabotage. To make matters worse, criminals are targeting ESCOM's multi-million rand infrastructure and ordinary citizens are often caught in the middle. Masa headed to Mpumalanga, where private landowners have become the last line of defence against cable theft syndicates. It's early evening on a farm in Balmoral, east of Pretoria. Marty Humphreys and her husband live here with their two children, although he spends most of his time working abroad. In this isolated rural area, thoughts turn to safety when the sun sets. So now all your doors are locked, Marty, but are you ever really safe on a farm? I don't think you're ever really safe. For Marty and her neighbours, crime hasn't always been a problem in this area. It used to be very quiet, yeah, so we didn't have worries about people walking around or stuff happening at night, but lately it's not like that anymore. Since February, they've been living on a knife's edge. When night falls, cable theft syndicates targeting two major power lines are on the prowl. The criminals scout during the day. They return at night, cutting through fences to get onto private property. The intruders are armed and dangerous. The landowners trying to protect the transmission lines running through their properties tell us there have been several shootouts. We've never had any trouble with these lines, and all of a sudden they've just been chopping it up every week, every night. When we meet her and her boys, Marty's husband has just returned from another stint abroad. But for the past two years, it's just been the three of them. We're there at night when Marty is at her most anxious. The next day, she shows us where the syndicate has been operating over the past eight months. The pylons, those towers that you can see on your yeah. right-hand side, they're still on my property. Uh, the next one is the neighbours. The pylons are the large steel structures carrying the cables. They're spaced around 250 metres apart. So the cables that you see there in the middle, there was a set of those cables running on this side of the pylon, and there was a set that's running on that side oh of the pylon. Oh, my word. So it's only the centre cables that's left. Overhead power lines are ESCOM's electricity highways. Once they reach cities, they split into smaller lines, just like a network of roads connecting to freeways. The Vulcan Minerva line runs parallel to the Duva Apollo line for around 80 kilometers from the greater Imalatleni area to Gauteng. While both these lines are targeted, Vulcan Minerva runs through Marti's property. You know how much is left of it now? Of the 80 kilometers, I'll guess 10 is left. This is not child's play stuff. They must know that it's off, though. Yes, this was switched off in February for maintenance. And then somehow it got leaked that the whole line is off. Vulcan Minerva is a 400 kV power line. That means it can transmit up to 400,000 volts of live electricity. Now, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be able to touch or even step on an extremely high voltage cable like this. But here we find ourselves. Switched on, it would be impossible to come within 12 meters of a power line of this size. But when it's switched off, as it is now, cable theft syndicates have a field day, stripping the lines and cutting them into pieces. They're after the aluminum that transmits our electricity. They work in big groups, so it's basically 10, 15 minutes, they cut it into pieces. Vian Lamprecht lives a couple of kilometers from Marti. Two weeks before our visit, he heard a line falling from the pylon close to his farmhouse. He tried to track the criminals, but they got away, leaving part of their loot behind. Is this the crime scene? Yeah, this is where the, uh, we found the, the cables. And if you look back, it's... It's basically on our back door. They cut it with the equipment, and then they, they take this aluminium pieces off, and then you'll see... Oh, right, that's how they do it. You're, you'll see right in the middle, there's a small piece, a steel cable. So the steel cable holds the lines. 
So they take off all the aluminium and they just leave the steel cable. When they the cable steel and ons vangen of ons kommen af, dan blijven they for so a week weg and then they all the process themselves not weer. So this is not iets wat die wat jy nou gestop het. Hulle hulle weet nou hier is nog kabels wat gesteel kan word. So hulle sal terugkom. Since February, landowners like Marti and Vien have been risking their lives trying to catch the cutters. The community gives us a demonstration of how they've organized themselves into a security watch, connected to each other by a radio system. When someone is lurking in the dark, the farm watch receives an alert. Moving quickly to an agreed location, they strategize, split into groups, and begin their search. This is the stash left behind by the criminals Vian chased from his farm. Weighing close to a ton, it would fetch around 25,000 rand on the black market. Dozens of piles like this are often stolen in one go. But it's the tools found on the scene that raise arguably the most serious question. We got this, um, we got the equipment that they use. I yeah, just because wanna, it can't be easy to I chop that up. I'm gonna show you this. Oh. So these are these are basically um, uh, equipment that you can buy in a local store. But these equipment that was very interesting because this is basically Eskom well, equipment. I haven't seen that before. Yeah. In March, Vian and the Farm Watch successfully trapped a group of 13 suspects who were then arrested by the police. They were carrying similar tools. From their passports, we could see that all of them were Mozambican people. They just told us that uh, they, they were instructed to take this package to Johannesburg. Landowners are convinced that ESCOM employees are part of the syndicate responsible for training the cutters. After the march arrests, ESCOM deployed security to protect the lines. Behind me is a single security vehicle tasked with manning this massive power line. It's almost like it's a losing battle, this. Eskom did get security guards in, a whole lot of patrol buckies to patrol the area. They were here for about a month and then we didn't see them again. I found out that the contract has been cut down to only three vehicles in this whole area, sure. patrolling an 80 kilometer line. Marty complained to Eskom about the lack of security but says nothing came of it. The landowners claim they are fighting a lone battle, but ESCOM disagrees. We are certainly aware of the activity um, in that particular area, and we are driving intelligence-led investigations there. It's an uphill battle for ESCOM's group head of security, Karen Pillay, tasked with strategizing on how to protect the utilities more than 400,000 kilometers of overhead lines. It's a matter of national interest at this point in time because it literally impacts um, a large scale of infrastructure across the country. When Vian found this stash of cables on his farm, he immediately alerted ESCOM, but no one responded. Landowners claim ESCOM is turning a blind eye to the situation. Pelé, though, says the utilities plan is working. In the past three months, we've actually seen at least a 40% reduction of incidents on that line. So it can tell you that the interventions we're driving are actually paying off. And plays adamant there's sufficient security on the Vulcan Minerva line. Security has not been withdrawn on that line. But it was um, drastically withdrawn. I would not necessarily say that because essentially um, on the 4th of July, we actually increased some of our security measures on that line, including the manpower that we were deploying in that area. We only saw two patrol vehicles during our visit. Crucially, ESCOM doesn't deny that its employees may be involved. We have been looking at the insider threat. We don't discount the potential of that threat. Lots of information around ESCOM activities is actually public information, and especially around the transparency we maintain on the um, state of the system in particular. A day after our visit to Balmoral, the criminals were back. And three days after that, again, near the pylons that still had something left to steal, farmland was torched. Farmers fought the flames throughout the night, and the next day, it was set alight. Again, for Marti, it's a nightmare she just wants to end. Now we're hoping that they will take the whole line and move on to something else. 
We're not dragging our feet about this. This infrastructure is critical, critical to ESCOM and critical to the country. After our visit to Megawatt Park, ESCOM finally fetched the cables from Viam's farm and Pele agreed that closer cooperation was needed with the landowners in the area. An urgent meeting was called, but ESCOM middle management was unavailable again. Even if ESCOM solves this generation problem, how are they going to adequately supply electricity if cable theft continues to flourish as it is here? If a power line has zero transmission, its loaders carried by an alternative line. But if the theft continues, more lines will inevitably drop, causing blackouts that can't be fixed overnight. Thanks for watching. Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like carte blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find Carte Blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, unique perspectives, wherever you go.